I'm Professor Shelby Temple. I'm a visual neuroscientist by training. I have spent the past uh, 25 years studying how light interacts with the eye. And during that time, I've uh, looked at various different aspects from corneal microstructures on the surface of the eye to how color vision varies across the eye. And most recently, I've looked at how animals and humans can detect the polarization of light. And that research led to a whole new way of assessing a pigment in the eye called our macular pigments, which are protective against blue light and age-related macular degeneration. And I guess that's probably why I've been invited here. I've been speaking around the world on this topic now around blue light protection and how people can go about protecting their retinas. Namaskar. We are here today to discuss a hot topic. Is blue light blocking just marketing? And today we have with us a revered international expert, Professor Shelby Temple to uncover the truth. Very Hello sure. and welcome to Optician India Magazine, Professor Tim. Certainly, thank you very much for the invitation to speak with you today. In view of your extensive work on the subject, considering the harmful effects on eyes, would like to ask you, why blue light and not any others? That's a great question and there's lots to that question. I think the first part we need to think about is defining what is blue light. So we think of blue light as um, the wavelengths from about 380 nanometers to 500 nanometers. This is the bottom third of the visual spectrum. So what we would typically call violet, blue, and turquoise, that's the blue light. And its main source is obviously from the sun and the sky. That's the brightest source of blue light in our lives. But it still comes from other places. And so today, there's a lot of confusion. What does blue light mean? We often associate it with blue light from digital devices. So just to clarify, any device or surface that looks white is necessarily have blue light in it because the reason it looks white is it's stimulating your red, green, and blue photoreceptors. And that's why it looks white. So anything that is blue or is white has blue in it. And the important thing is it doesn't matter whether the blue photons come from the sun, the sky, or an LED monitor. If they're blue and at a certain wavelength, they carry the same amount of energy. And they're like a little packet of energy. And it's the amount of energy that dictates what kind of damage they can do. So Blue light in particular, if you look at the visible spectrum, blue light sits at the bottom end, right near the ultra. And we all appreciate that ultraviolet light is dangerous. We all know that it causes skin cancer, melanomas, and can do all sorts of other damage. But the damage doesn't stop when we go from ultraviolet into violet and blue. It carries on, it's just that it decreases slowly. And what's important is that below about 500 nanometers, so where you get to the green, light below that, blue, violet, you know, ultraviolet, has more than 2.5 electron volts per photon. That's very technical. But what that means is that each packet of light carries enough energy to cause the formation of free radicals or reactive oxygen species. And these are uh, molecules that are missing an electron and they interact with other molecules and create damage, what we call photochemical damage. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So research done back in the 70s on blue light was done when they first invented lasers. And they noticed that blue lasers were really powerful and dangerous. So they compared two lasers with the same number of photons, a blue laser and a green laser. And what they saw was that the blue laser was 20 times more damaging than the green laser. It had that much more power because the energy per photon decreases from with wavelengths. So 380 nanometer photon has almost twice as much energy as a red photon, which is why red photons and yellow photons, those ones are less dangerous to us and why we're really focusing on the blue. So now, if we know that UV light's dangerous, what's interesting is that the cornea and lens protect us from UV light. So people often talk about UV light being you know, associated with age-related macular generation or advanced aging of the retina. In actual fact, it's not so much of an issue for the retina because it doesn't get to the retina. Nature's put in place the lens and cornea to block that ultraviolet light. It's still dangerous to the front of the eye. It causes cataracts, cancers, problems, but not to the retina so much. So then if blue light's dangerous, you'd think, well, hang on a second, shouldn't nature put in place some protection of the retina for blue light too? And guess what? It has. Nature's put in place macular pigments. These are pigments that sit right in front of the retina, in particular in front of the macula, 
which is the most sensitive part of the retina. It has the highest metabolic rate, and it only has blood flow from behind. There's no capillaries over your macula. So make sure to put in place these macular pigments that are very effective at absorbing violet blue light and acting as antioxidants to protect damage by violet blue light and other things. The problem is you only get these pigments from your diet and you don't know how much you have. So the only thing you can do is measure them. You can't look at somebody and tell by their skin color, their eye color, their hair color, how much pigment they have. So my research led to this new way of measuring these pigments. And that's sort of what I've been doing. I've been looking at, can we use this device to assess people's macular pigments as part of a regular eye exam and then give them good advice about how they can protect themselves against violet blue light. So that was a rather long question, but it sort of ties in why it's important that blue light's the important part and the other wavelengths really are, are less concerning when it comes to retinal damage. Delving deeper into the subject, what are the favorable and unfavorable blue lights? Okay, unfavorable, we, you know, the bad blue light is really all of it from 380 to 500 nanometers. So some, from the violet all the way through to the, to the green, that range. But there's a trade-off to be had because as we increase wavelength, the relative risk decreases. So above about 450 nanometers, there's less risk. And because that light is the part we need for our setting our circadian rhythm, our sleep-wake cycle, it's really important that we get some of that light. So we call that part the good blue light. And the good blue light is centered around the blue turquoise. Uh, it sits at about 480 nanometers. And it's the light that's absorbed by melanopsin, which is part of the intrinsically photoreceptive ganglion cells. These are cells in our retina that absorb violet blue light and then trigger melatonin release or secretion from the pineal gland. So in the morning, you want to get good exposure to this blue light to stop your melatonin and then you feel vibrant and alert and alive. But in the evening, you want to reduce your blue light exposure because you don't want too much of that melatonin excretion. Uh, sorry, you need that melatonin excretion to enable sleep. So the good news is that these pigments I talked about that protect you against blue light, they're only in the center of your retina. And the sensitive uh, melanopsin containing granglo cells are all in the periphery. So they don't interfere with each other, which is really great. And both of them block some of that blue light from getting to your retina. So in a sense, you're, you're well protected across your whole retina naturally. But that good blue light is the circadian rhythm setting blue light around 480 nanometers. And the bad blue light is the part below 455. That's what we consider the bad blue. So 380 to 455, what we call the violet blue. So this makes us wonder how we can verify the claims made by a few brands for products which are available in the market are actually blocking only the unfavorable blue lights? That's a good question. And it's a two part question. The first part is sort of asking, uh, will blue light lenses sort of affect my sleep? Because of course, if they're blocking the good part, that's not a good thing necessarily. And the answer is to that part of the question is it's really not a concern because the amount of light you need to set your circadian rhythm is actually quite low, 100 to 300 lux. So typical house lighting indoors, with relatively good lights that have enough blue in them will set your circadian rhythm in the morning. But of course, in the evening, you wanna reduce that blue light. And so some lenses, like some of the really strong computer lenses that look yellow, they'll block all of the blue light and therefore will change your circadian rhythm if you wore them in the morning, for example. But they might be good to wear in the evening because that's when they would block that blue light and let you get to sleep better. So if you wanted to game at night, for example. But the second part of that question is really, how do we know how much bad blue light that a lens is filtering? And that's an important question too. And it's not easily answered at this time, but there's an answer coming. So the International Organization for Standardization, the ISO, they in the past put out a certification for sunglasses as the UV 400 stamp. And lots of sunglasses will have a UV 400 certification. And that tells the buyer that these sunglasses will let less than 1% of UV light through. But that isn't happened yet for blue filtering lenses, but it's starting. ISO released a report a couple of years ago called the ISO TR20772. Now that report is all about looking at how do we go about creating a standard for blue light filtering lenses. And in that report, they talk about, as I just did, the two most important parts, the dangerous blue light, which is all the way from 380 to 500, but more importantly, the really concerning part, 300 to 455. That's the part that you want to have filtered out by your blue filtering glasses. And in that document, they also point out the strong risk factors for advanced aging of the retina. And the ones you can't control, like age and genetics, and the ones you can, like smoking, low macular pigments, and exposure to that blue light. So right now, there isn't an easy way to do it. What I've been doing myself is I have all the equipment to make measurements, and I invite optometrists or lens manufacturers to send me products. And I've created a simple metric that allows us to assess how much of that dangerous blue light is being transmitted through a lens. 
Um, and then we make measurements. And to give you a sense, I've measured lenses from all sorts of companies from around the world. And typically a blue filtering lens will block about 20 to 30% of the blue light. Whereas a pair of sunglasses or active photochromics will block between 80 to 90%, 99% of that blue light. Now, some people say, oh, 20 to 30%, that's not very much. What? That's not, that's not enough. I need more than that. In actual fact, you have to be careful. The reason they've kept it at 20 to 30% is that if you block more than that, you start to change the color and you can't see the colors properly, so then it wouldn't be a clear lens. And 20 to 30% is still enough because the damage you're worried about doesn't happen overnight. It's not like I have to block all the blue light right now. What I'm looking at is age-related macular degeneration is the accumulation of damage through your entire life. It takes 50 to 70 years to accumulate. So what you're trying to do is reduce that exposure through life. So if I reduce the exposure by 20 to 30% through my entire life, I gain extra good vision at the end of my life. A great analogy would be if I was to take 20 to 30% off of your paycheck, you know, it would be upsetting, you'd be annoyed, but it wouldn't affect you in one month. But over the course of your life, by the time you got to retirement, if you'd lost 20 to 30% of your income through your whole life, you wouldn't be able to retire the way you wanted to. Well, the reverse is true for blue light. If I can reduce the blue light through your entire life by 30%, I can extend your good vision for longer. Because in reality, we will all get age-related macular degeneration if we live long enough, because it's inevitable. It's part of the free radical theory of aging. Our systems break down. But if you can reduce some of the risk factors, like exposure to sunlight and blue light, then in fact, you can prolong your vision so that when you retire, you can still do all the great things you want to do with your vision. And that's all about long-term protection. I would request you to bring to light a few research or studies which are available on the effects of sunlight on eyes and uh, you know what are recommended precautions, including the usage of sunglasses and correct lens is the out of those studies. Yeah, sure. So there's been some, some really nice work. One of my favorites is a sort of a natural experiment. Vojnikovic and Vojnikovic in 2010, two ophthalmologists, they visited a Benedictine monastery where there were 15 sisters living in this, on this little monastery. And when they went in, they were asked to do an ophthalmological examination of the people's eyes, the sisters' eyes. And what they found was that 13 of the sisters had what he described as the eyes of a baby, the retinas of a baby. They were perfect in every way, uh, no signs of aging but two of them had early signs of age-related macular degeneration. And when he looked at their environment, they lived in this lovely monastery by the sea with covered windows and everything seemed fine. But the two sisters that had early AMD were actually the gardeners and they spent most of their days outdoors in sunlight, exposed without wearing sunglasses to reflections from the sea and the garden. So that was a really clear sort of controlled experiment, but it wasn't controlled in the, natu- in the scientific way, it was controlled naturally. People prefer sort of more controlled studies. And there's a really good study, the European Eye Study, uh, which was published by Fletcher et al. in 2008. And it looked at almost 5,000 people. And it looked at the impact of exposure to blue light at different times through life. And it's often misquoted because when they looked at everybody, they saw that exposure to blue light only had a small increase in the risk ratio, the odds ratio of getting AMD. But importantly, when they looked at those people, the bottom 25%, who had low levels of these macular pigments in their system, so lutein or zeaxanthin combined with vitamin A and vitamin E. What they found for those people was that their risk of AMD was much, much higher when exposed to blue light. Uh, In fact, so high, it was 372% more likely to get AMD if exposed to blue light across their lives. Now, if you compare that to smoking, smoking gives you a 400% increased risk, almost the same as that. But on a public health level, smoking is much less frequent. So in the UK anyways, only about 15% of the population smoke, but more than 25 to 30% of people have low macular pigments and therefore at much greater risk of age-related macular degeneration. Another great study was done by Sui et al. It's a meta-analysis and they looked at 14 different studies and they found that 12 of those 14 studies showed an increased risk of AMD. And on average, they said, you've got about a 40% increased risk of AMD if you're exposed to sunlight through your life. But probably the best study was done by McGill et al. And this is a proper randomized control study, but not in humans, because of course you can't do that. Humans will get AMD over 50 to 75 years. We can't do randomized control studies in humans. It takes too long and it's not ethical, but they could do it in rhesus macaques. And this was a lovely study. They took the babies and they broke them into two groups and they followed them for 30 years. And what they did is they took one group and gave them a normal diet. And then they looked at the age at which they had 30% of the population had stage three drusen, which is a, would typically happen at 65 
in humans. And what they found was in these monkeys, at the age of 18 for a monkey, which is the age equivalent of 65, sure enough, 30% of the population had stage three drusen. But the other half of the population, they raised and they gave them the same diet, same behavior, same everything, fully controlled, except they removed the carotenoids, the lutein and zeaxanthin from their diet. And those monkeys actually ended up getting stage three drusen, 30% at age 35, equivalent of humans, almost half the age. So that's a really clear study where you control for the amount of violet blue light getting to the retina by changing those macular pigments. And what you get is a much younger age of getting age-related macular degeneration. So sort of to get back to your question and how important is like sun protection and should we be using them? It's really important actually, because one of these key risk factors for an aging of the eye is in fact this sunlight and violet blue light exposure. Imagine that the eye is sort of like a magnifying glass in front of your retina and it's focusing the beams that come into your eye on that retina. Over time, it's accumulating damage. And the more you expose it, the more damage you do. And it's easy to go, well, you know, that's off in the distance. But when you get to that age, you'll be wanting to wish you'd made more efforts to look after your retina. Right. So again, coming back to the products which are available in the market, really interested to know that is it marketing or it's actually needed? Yeah, I mean, I guess what I've been talking about is that it's needed, right? I mean, the question is often it feels like a lot of marketing because people see an opportunity. Companies see an opportunity to sell you something based on fear. But the reality is that they're all based on real science, that in fact, violet blue light is well established as dangerous to the retina. And over the course of your life, it will cause problems. So these companies have, have taken advantage of the fact that there's an issue that needs to be solved and they're providing lots of products. There are lots of things you can do that are simple and easy. So you, you, know, you don't have to buy really expensive, fancy things to do this. You can wear a hat. You can reduce your time outdoors in the sun. Uh, you can eat a really good diet of dark green leafy and brightly colored fruits and vegetables. You can wear sunglasses of any kind to reduce the amount of light getting into your eyes. Um, but these extra products will go the extra mile. So a good pair of sunglasses will really block that violet blue light much more, up to 99%. A good pair of blue filtering lenses will add that extra level of protection through your life and you wear them all the time. So I wear them all the time, knowing that I'm losing 30% of the blue light rendering my eye. So they are just marketing hype. Um, they are, in fact, needed, and they will improve your long-term vision by decreasing the amount of that violet blue light getting to your retina. We would also like to know more about the products, especially the softwares that are recently launched by Azul Optics. Right. So um, product is uh, this product behind me, this um, MPI, we call it. And what it is, it's a very fast, easy test. It takes about one minute um, to assess somebody's macular pigments. And that's their natural protection against violet blue light. It's like their internal sunglasses. And the idea is that by being so fast and easy, it fits into a regular eye exam. So eye care professionals and optometrists can measure all of their patients. And it's so easy. We've been measuring children from the age of five all the way up to 95. So it's really, really easy to do. It takes a minute and it then gives you advice or informs you about this natural protection you have. And then combined with advice around lifestyle choices, what we find is that patients are more likely to take action. So we can look at ourselves and go, yeah, I need to eat better. I need to lose weight. But until you get on a scale and get a number, you're trying to, you kind of forget that you're, you know, maybe putting on a few pounds. It's that same idea. What this does is it gives you a number. It tells you a number or score about how well protected your retina is, which we find really stimulates patients to go on and do something about it. So what we see is that people that score low are sort of 78% more likely to buy sunglasses or blue filtering lenses from their optometrist, which means that they're more likely to take action and protect their retinas. So we're really excited about getting this out. Right now, we're just about to start some research in India with the LV Prasad Eye Institute to sort of get some normative data in that, in that um, population. Uh, and we'll be looking to bring this device to India quite soon. So we're hoping that you'll see it in your market uh, in the near future. So we'd like to... Thank you for uh, taking out time from your busy schedule at such a short notice. Thank you for being a part of Optician India, and we look forward to more such interactions in the future. It's been a great pleasure, and thank you very much for the invitation.